Well, hi guys, it's that time. It's our Bible teaching snippet of the day. Well, I'm sitting here in Plano, Texas, and I'm at my kid Courtney's desk, and I thought I'd hop on real quick. I'm running a little late already <clears throat> bringing the word to you today. But today, you know what? I'm just going to be that encourager one more time. I'm not getting heavy into any teaching this week, but I do want to take you over to Hebrews chapter 11, and I'm going to connect this in a personal way for each and every person that's listening to this. It, and I'm going to read it in my expanded Bible because it's easier to understand. <clears throat> the uh, King James Version has a funny way of wording it, and sometimes it's hard for us to understand it. So here we go. Faith means being sure of the things we hope for and knowing that something is real even if we do not see it. I want to stop right there, and I want to say this. If you're hoping for something, instead of complaining to other people about it, I'll let that sink in. If you're hoping for something and you don't have it, maybe instead of complaining and illuminating and continuing to speak out what's negative and what is missing, maybe we need to speak out what we're hoping for so that it can manifest. Now I'm going to read another verse to show you what I mean. Verse 3, it is by faith we understand that the whole world, the universe, the cosmos, was made by God's command, by his word, his spoken word, so that what we see was made by something that we cannot see, that was not seen and was made visible. What, okay, so what, let, me, let me apply this to your life, uh, and I'm going to use me, okay, because that way I can't hurt anybody's feelings. When I was born again, and I was really, and it was like the closer I got to God, the further away from I got from my husband. But now look, we have this wonderful relationship. We were always equally yoked up until I got born again, and he wasn't. So now we're unequally yoked. <clears throat> And I quit cussing. I lost all my spice rack. I wasn't, you know, I just changed so much. And for three or more years, he wasn't, okay? I still loved him, but we were growing apart because I changed so much. And it wasn't his fault, okay? He was still in the same agreement. I'm the one that changed. And, you know, uh, it was really hard because it was just, we were different now. And I was complaining, which, by the way, if you're going to complain to somebody, complain to God, okay? Quit complaining to your friends. You know what? You're not looking for an answer when you're complaining to other people. All you're wanting is to find that three or four people that will agree with you and get in the ditch with you and lay there so you can all be happy and eat your popcorn together, okay? So <clears throat> if you're going to complain about something, just to complain about it, complain about it to God. Because you know what? He's not going to get in the ditch with you. And he's not going to leave you there either. Okay. So I was complaining to my father about how he and I, my husband and I, had kind of grown apart. And I was just so tired of the struggle of me trying to walk that walk and get closer and closer to my father and walking in the kingdom. But my husband was stuck. And he really was, he was just where he was always at. I was the one that was moving, okay? Okay. But I complained to God a lot about that. And one day he showed me. He just, he just started talking to me. He said, well, Faith, what do you want him to be? What do you want? And I said, well, you know, I want him to be wonderful like he was before, before I changed. Because when I was like him, we were so stinking happy together. And now I've changed and he's not changing with me. And God told me, he said, well, speak out those things that aren't those things that you don't see start speaking what you hope for and what you want oh my goodness gracious that hit me just like boom immediately I got into my iPhone and I changed my husband's name God did that he changed people's names and I changed it to just his first name and last name, to my wonderful husband. And every time I got a text message, every time I got a phone call from him, I had to see that 
see that. What I hoped for, I was beginning to see it, even if it was just in writing on my telephone. But I also wrote out, God asked me what I wanted. What, what was my hopes? Okay, let's go back to verse 1. The things I was hoping for, okay, that I didn't see, even if we do not see. So I started writing out what I wanted him to be, that I wanted him to be a, a wonderful man. I wanted him to start loving people the way that I did and for him to be born again and all of these things. And I started saying those things out loud about him, just like God told me to be. And did you know that now I see everything that I hope for? because I wrote it out and I spoke it out, things that I hoped for, but I couldn't see. And this, he's changed and he became everything that I hoped for. And I wanna say this, it's not just him. Once I found that principle, that principle that works through everything, a principle is something that doesn't change regardless of the situation. So if you can apply this principle of speaking things that you don't see, to the things that you hope for. I don't see my healing, but I'm going to speak over that. I'm going to, I, that's my hope, so I'm going to speak my hope. I, I'm not going to speak my complaint. I'm not going to speak my defeat. I'm going to speak my hope. What I don't see that I'm looking for, I'm going to speak it out loud. I'm going to write it down. I'm going to change things, okay? And those things will shift and change. And it doesn't matter if you're having a problem with your children, your husband, your job, if you have a personality conflict, if you will quit complaining to your three friends so they can agree with you and leave you stuck where you are and pat you on your hand and say, oh, you poor little thing, speak out what you hope for. Change it. Change it. You can change it with your words. You can have what you hope for in every conflict. You can change it. You don't have to be mad at a person. You can change it for your words. What you hope for will manifest if you will quit. Okay, I need to close, but I need to say this. The more you complain and the more you focus on the negative, you're putting miracle grow on the problem. And you're growing it to get bigger and bigger and a bigger. See, that's how an offense or something, an argument, disagreement, it grows and grows and grows because you focus on that and you keep watering that little plant and it keeps growing and growing, okay? So what we want to do is we want to quit complaining to our friends and just mouthing off stuff. And we want to change our words and start speaking out loud what we hope for, not what's in front of us. And that way we can shift it and change it because things will shift and change as we shift and change our words toward that thing. Okay, guys? Listen, I love you, and I'm going to hop off here. And I got my favorite shirt on today. I love you. I'll see you tomorrow right here. Bye-bye.